How's it YouTube? Welcome to the Wilderness Channel. Today we're going to talk about tools that a naturalist would use in the field. A naturalist is basically anybody who is interested in the wild, in the outdoors and wants to learn more about it. Um, it can be a, a person who's a basic amateur or it can be somebody who's actually got some a somewhat of a background, scientific background or academic background, but nonetheless also has an interest in the natural world. Um, it's useful to have tools as a naturalist so that you can be able to record what's out there and refer back to it uh, for reference and for, for continued learning. Uh, one of the tools that you can start to use immediately is a simple notebook and a diary uh, where you record information that you find in the field, make sketches, uh, make drawings of various landscapes, plants, um, tracks, whatever interests you and of course having uh, tape will be useful as mark as a marker. Um, you can mark the tape to to label things, um, and various marker pens and pencils, etc. Good to write in pencil uh, for wet weather, because it doesn't run obviously when the, the pencil is wet. Um, some of the other tools that you might consider are tracking tools. Uh, a lot of people are interested in tra tracking. You might want to use tracking sticks for pointing out tracks. For circling tracks and for measuring tracks, for example, the stride length, you might also use pegs to indicate the position of individual tracks. Reference books, um, various field guides, as on the right hand side, help with identification of tracks, and you might want to have a series of drawings to scale of tracks which you can write notes in, as on the left hand side. And that way you can uh, compile, start to compile a good record of the tracks that you find and also. Um, begin to understand you know exactly what's out there. You can also make casts of the tracks uh, using plaster of Paris uh, which you mix with water. You can mix it in a plastic bag um, which is the easiest way to mix it or you can use a stick and a cup, cup like a paper cup uh, where you can mix the plaster of Paris and that will be used then to make the casts. You want it to, uh, uh, thick enough so that it doesn't run it isn't too runny, but you don't want it too thick so that it damages a, a delicate track. Um, once you've made the plaster of Paris, you want to pour it into a cast. Um, the, the cast is usually made up of a plastic frame. It's kind of a form, is another name for it, um, which can be any kind of plastic that you can roll up and pin together. And that just kind of holds the, the cast track in place. In this picture, you can see uh, dove tracks on the right um, and then on the left you can see the little claw marks of terrapins which are freshwater turtles. Um, this was actually cast at a pond uh, where a leopard had been seen and we got some leopard tracks and various other tracks. Um, the tracks that you can cast are, are infinite really. As long as you've got a fairly decent track you can get anything such as uh, bird tracks, uh, top left there you have some dove tracks, dwarf mongoose in the middle, um, leopard on the right, and then of course on the left uh, white mongoose, white-tailed mongoose, is one of the biggest mongoose species. The two tracks there, uh, the one at the right hand side is actually a back track. Then there's another bird track um, which was also taken, uh, possibly possibly a hornbill or a crow. Um, yeah, so those, so those are some of the track casts, and they, they are actually negative impressions, which you can then turn around, um, you can then push into the sand and make a positive impression. Then optical instruments, these are the most important instruments really for many naturalists, such as binoculars for birding, um, also for looking at nests in trees or game viewing, um, a jeweler's loop, which you use for looking at grass um, inflorescences for identifying grass, and then various magnifying glasses, which help um, to, to look at small, um, to magnify small things. And then a lens pen, of course, to clean all your instruments. Uh, for example, it's got a brush on it, and then there's also a pad on the other side, which helps you to clean it very nicely. Um, so you can keep your equipment clean. Flashlights or torches. Most torches nowadays are LED torches. They've got a very powerful light, but it's quite a cold light for taking photos. Nonetheless, a good headlamp is very important because you want to be able to have hands-free um, work 
um, the hand torch is obviously for when you're walking around and we want to look at it a long distance. Also, ultraviolet uh, torches are very good for finding scorpions at night. So that's something you also want to have in your toolkit as a, you know, as a budding um, naturalist. Um, once you have your lighting equipment, you can use it also for frogging. Um, then there's the map and compass. The map and compass is obviously essential. You want to have a good road map or at the very least a topographical map of the area you're in. You want to have a compass, a magnetic compass for finding direction and you want to use pacing beads if you're on foot if you perhaps want to measure distances covered. So a map definitely is essential as far as um, you know getting out there, being able to find your way around. Um, and obviously a GPS is something else you can use, but signals are not always good, so it's always good to know how to use a compass and a map. Measuring instruments, these are used for various purposes. The 15 centimeter rules uh, can be used for scale on, in tracking when you're taking photographs. The um, vernier calipers are for very, very precise measurements um, of various things. The magnetic compass is obviously used for the um, for finding direction and also finding the direction of tracks the tracks are moving in. The altimeter for getting altitude if you want to record that information. Then you have a measuring tape which you can use for, for measuring various things. You can also get a tape that measures a uh, diameter of, of trees for, for a similar purpose. Then cutting and digging tools. Um, you might want to use uh, you know, knives for various purposes. Uh, Leathermans are very good multi-purpose knives. Any, any multi-purpose knife would be good. Pruning shears are great for pruning branches that you might want to use. Uh, as part of your plant collection when you're collecting um, plant specimens and hand trowel for the same purpose for digging up uh, plants and then of course a dissecting kit which is useful for um, dissecting uh, you know whatever you find out there including road kills so um, you can't go wrong with the cutting instrument here we have some plant collecting tools the, the trowel the hand trowel and the pruning shears and of course a plant press. The plant press is made up of a framework of wood and they are held together with straps and you will put in blotting paper, newspaper and corrugated cardboard and then you will press your plants between those those pieces of paper and that will be enable you to collect a, a whole series of plants that you can add to an herbarium. Um, I'll do a video on uh, sort of an herbarium collection uh, at a later stage. Um, then there's the backpack. You want to have a good day pack for carrying your, your material, your tools, etc., and whatever you uh, want to eat as well for lunch, and of course water and medic and a medical kit. Um, it should be waterproof, preferably, especially in rainforest areas or if you expect to cross rivers. This is a waterproof bag, and you can see it can be sealed at the top, which is um, very useful if you're going out into the field as a as a naturalist. Um, a, apart from the pack there are uh, still other tools that you might want to use. Uh, for example uh, you might want to take a field guide book um, or a series of field guides depending on what you're interested in uh, to help you identify plants and animals in the area. These are several bird guides. This is obviously the, one of the more popular hobbies amongst naturalists and of course you want to take a good pair of binoculars. There are also all kinds of other guides which might deal with uh, wildflowers, um, mammals, tracks, shells, seashells, um, you name it. Um, but all in all these are the basic tools that you need as a naturalist. I hope you enjoyed this video and please join us again for um, another video. If you like the content please subscribe.